Hey guys, Ryan here, and in this video, I'm going to be explaining the difference between a rolling and point release Linux distribution, as well as give some thoughts on which one would be better if you're going to be gaming on Linux. So, one of the most common things I often hear when people ask about gaming on Linux is what distribution should they be using? And often the reply is, well, just use one that includes the latest drivers and kernels. In other words, use a rolling release distribution. However, is that strictly true when you'll find that most Linux distributions adopt the point release model instead of running release? And does that mean that if you use Ubuntu, for example, instead of Arch Linux, you're going to have a poorer gaming experience? But first, let's define what the difference is between a point release and a rolling release, and we'll start with the latter. So a rolling release distribution is one that you install once, and assuming that you keep it up to date, You'll always be running the latest version of software, your desktop environment, kernels, drivers, and anything else that makes up the distribution. In other words, you'll be running an unstable system. Now, stability in Linux terms does not mean that your system is more prone to crashes or bugs, although the latter can occur. No, what it really means is stability in Linux terms means that your system is always changing. In other words, a stable Linux system is one that doesn't change often. And on the other side of the coin, an unstable system is one that does change. All Linux distributions that adopt the rolling release model are unstable and they include distributions such as Arch Linux, Endeavor OS, OpenSUSE if you choose the Tumbleweed option, Manjaro, although Manjaro is more a curated, shall we say, rolling release distribution. On the other hand, you have what's known as a point release distribution. Now, this is a distribution that may have multiple full releases within the time span of a year and each release is supported for a set period. Once this support period ends, you're then expected to update to the next version. In the time between these releases, you'll only get security updates, as well as updates to web browsers. So for example, if you install LibreOffice at version 5.0, and then version 6.0 comes out before the next release of distribution, you're still going to be using 5.0 until you update. So examples of Linux distributions that use the point release model include Ubuntu, Linux Mint, OpOS, and Fedora. Although Fedora is kind of unique in the fact that you will still get newer versions of software, drivers, and kernels released in between each release of Fedora itself. I suppose in a way you can think of Fedora as a pseudo rolling release distribution. So now that we've defined what a rolling release Linux distribution is, why would people recommend that you use one when it comes to gaming on Linux? Well, simple really, by their very nature, Rolling release distributions will give you access first to the latest versions of drivers and kernels, and these are two things that are very important when you're gaming on Linux. The latest drivers will often have updated Vulkan extensions, which are required when translating from DirectX to Vulkan using Proton, or should I say more specifically, DXVK and VKD 3D Proton, and also at times these latest drivers will contain some bug fixes. Now I'm just going to make a point out that NVIDIA do tend to have day one driver support on both Windows and Linux equally, and these drivers both do support NVENC, CUDA, DLSS, and ray tracing across both operating systems. In fact, despite its proprietary nature, the NVIDIA driver is more plug and play when it comes to new NVIDIA hardware, as all you need to do is install the driver that supports the hardware, reboot your system, and then you're set. Now, in contrast, the situation with AMD is much more complicated, as there are several drivers that are available for their hardware. However, in most cases, you only need to concern yourself with two of them, and that is the AMD developed AMD Pro driver, which is typically used for professional software such as DaVinci Resolve, and then the community developed RADV or MESA driver. So ironically, AMD does not contribute to the development of the MESA driver. This is purely community driven, alongside companies such as Valve, Google, and Microsoft that all contribute to development. The MESA driver is what's primarily used when gaming using AMD hardware on Linux. Now another consideration when using AMD hardware on Linux is the age of the hardware. As in some cases, you may need to be running the latest available kernel, at times this may be a release candidate, as this could be the difference between being able to boot using this hardware or not. So after speaking to people who own or have owned AMD hardware and used it alongside Linux, it does take approximately 6 months to have full functionality of the hardware. Now for balance, I should point out that if you have NVIDIA hardware, then the kernel doesn't really matter, as you typically build your driver using the Dynamic Kernel Module Support, or DKMS. And the final note I'm going to make about drivers on Linux is that there's two parts of them. 
you have the kernel modules and the user space drivers. So the kernel module is self-explanatory, it's the firmware that supports the GPU in the kernel. In lay terms, for AMD, you need a kernel that includes firmware that supports your hardware, and for NVIDIA, you're patching your own support. Uh, the second aspect is the user space driver, which, as the name suggests, is what interacts with the software. So for AMD, you'd be using the RAD VR message drivers, and for NVIDIA, you'd be using the user space drivers that come as part of the overall proprietary driver installation package. And just to finish off, a common thing you might hear about AMD drivers is that you don't need to install them as they come pre-installed, which I suppose is true when you're talking about the kernel side of things, but in some distributions, they may not include the user space drivers out of the box. So given that I've just explained why you would use a really released distribution for gaming, then why would you even consider gaming on something such as Linux Mint or Ubuntu? Well, the reality is that you can get the latest drivers and kernels on almost any distributions, and you'll find that the performance will be the same, or at least within any noticeable margin of error. The only real difference is, of course, how you obtain these latest drivers or kernels. For example, to install the latest NVIDIA drivers on Ubuntu distributions, you just need to add a PPA that includes them. And the same method can be applied for the latest AMD drivers. And then once you've updated your system, you'll now find you're running the exact same version of drivers that are available on a distribution such as Arch Linux. Alternatively, for Fedora, you just need to simply add and enable the RPM NVIDIA repository and then repeat the same steps. So to install the latest kernels for Ubuntu-based distributions, you can just use the Ubuntu mainline kernel installer. Now for Fedora and Pop OS, you don't actually need to do anything as both these distributions will now update to the latest available kernels as long as you keep your system up to date. In either way, you should be able to get access to the latest drivers and kernels on your distribution of choice. Now finally, there is a huge advantage that point release distributions have over rolling release distributions, and that's that you're not actually forced to update everything on your system. So what I mean by that is that if you want to update your Arch-based system to the latest GPU driver, you have to update everything on your system at the same time. Uh, to me, I tend to find that a rolling release distribution is more of an all or nothing deal. Now in contrast, you could be running the LTS release of Ubuntu and you just want to update your GPU drivers. So what do you do? You just add a PPA, update the driver, and then everything else doesn't have to be changed at all. So just to put some real world context into this, uh, I use Manjaro, which is a rolling release distribution, so I do have access to the latest drivers and kernels as a release. But that being said, historically I've used Ubuntu and I've just added PPAs and i found there's no real difference in performance. It's just basically based off what your preference is at the end of the day. So in conclusion, your choice of latest distribution for gaming should not be determined by its release model. Choose something that you like the look of and then just use the recommended method to get you access to these latest drivers and kernels. From here you can install the Steam, Lutris, the Heroic Game Launcher, or alternatively Bottles or whatever your prepared software is for playing games on your particular system. As always guys, thank you very much for watching, and please do let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. But if you did find this video helpful, then please don't forget to leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheerio!